This One Degree Outside video is sponsored by the Topps Field Fair, America's oldest fair. You can pre-order your admission, meal, and ride tickets today at topsfieldfair.org and join the fun October 4th through 14th, conveniently located on Route 1, just off of Interstate 95. It's a Monday, and that means other pattern predictions. A look out to the why behind the two-week forecast, why the 14-day looks the way it does. Hi, Matt Noyce. I'm going to reference our Insights video a couple of times along the way. You can find that in Monday Insights at OneDegreeOutside.com. All right, but let's get started out with the overall jet stream pattern. The jet stream we've drawn in here, the fast river of air high in the sky that steers disturbances and separates cool air to the north from warm to the south. We have been in a persistent trough or dip in the jet stream here in the Northeast. That's why we keep getting these shots of cool, dry air. Also, one of the defining characteristics I've been telling you about the past few weeks in these pattern predictions is the separation between northern stream and southern stream. You keep getting energetic disturbances with cool air. You can get some showers scattered around out of that. Uh, that's what we're getting today. But then in terms of deeper moisture, it's been cut off. It's been down in the subtropical jet, and that's, of course, what's going to help to steer Milton through Florida. More on that in our Insights video and the impact that's expected to Florida. What's interesting is we have into the upcoming weekend as the jet stream does relax a little bit. It rides to the north. It opens up some warming. We get up to about 70 on Saturday as a New England average. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic uh, weekend for us overall. But we're not done with jet stream troughing. Why would we be? It's been the case over the past several weeks. And look at this. This one looks even more defined than the one we're dealing with this week. So this week in Insights, I told you how we may see first flakes in some of the North Country by Thursday morning. Uh, we likely will see a first frost in much of northern New England, even parts of central New England at midweek. Well, next week, if you're going to get an even deeper trough to carve out, you've got a chance of seeing at least the first frost coming down to parts of southern New England. We'll talk more about that here in just a minute. Notice also, not this coming weekend, but next weekend with a timestamp in the upper left, you do have a chance at phasing the streams between the southern moisture and the northern energy. Now, if this happens early enough in the process, you get a pretty big coastal storm and it impacts us perhaps next weekend or end of next week and next weekend. If it happens a little bit later in the game, you're going to get that storm to be weaker and develop farther offshore over the Gulf Stream and then make its way out over the ocean. I have to tell you, I think right now that's the most likely scenario to happen, uh, but it's something at least to watch if you're uh, into watching for bigger storms and the impact of wind and rain. If you're a planner, a decision maker, we'll watch that time frame around next weekend to see how that comes together. Either way, once that comes by, guess what? Yeah, it's another trial. Off. It's another shot of cool air that comes into play. If you look at the surface, what I've done here is I've got the colors indicating the surface temperature, and then the black lines indicate surface barometric pressure. So you can see low pressure, high pressure. I've got the wind on here too. There's Milton coming across Florida. Here we are with our cool air, right? That cool air relaxes this weekend, and we talked about the new trough, the new dip in the jet stream for next week. Look at this. Yeah, morning low temperatures, even colder middle of next week than they will be middle of this week, and we'll watch to see what that storm center does along about next week. And this would be that kind of weaker scenario I told you about. I think that's the most likely thing to happen. But with the jet stream so close to the subtropical jet in that period, it's at least worth watching and worth me telling you about. So you can keep an eye on that in our app in the 14-day forecast we get closer to. High temperatures over the next 14 days. Really, the warmest day is this upcoming Saturday. That's why I say the weekend looks really, really good. And then there's that dip that happens. You say, well, what about low temps, right? So many have been asking about frost in southern New England. That is going to be one of your better chances for frost in southern New England. So the New England average low goes to about 40 middle of this week, which is why we say northern New England's got a chance of frost. But next week, that New England average low drops down to about 37 degrees or so. You say, where is that for? Uh, we've heard from some of you before. Totally get it. Uh, we try to pick a population-weighted kind of geographic average. So you're talking about probably southern New Hampshire would be where a lot of that would verify. But keep in mind, valleys of central mass are able to cool down more than, let's say, the New England average, right? And that's why I say that when you get into parts of next week, uh, middle of next week, some of us may see that first frost coming into parts of southern New England. Obviously, we're able to make some rain out of things for today. You never see a real guarantee of rain along the way, largely because it has to do with the timing of these disturbances they zip through, and again, how much phasing would go on. But you do have some times of elevated shower chances because of the disturbances of the jet stream trough. Just keep an eye, again, to the percent chance in the daily forecast on our app, so you watch that and see how the timing is going to shake out. I can tell you that in the tropics, remember last week, we were talking about the Gulf, 
We were talking about the Central and Eastern Atlantic. Both of those zones certainly did heat up over the last week, right? Now I look out beyond Milton anyway and say, you know what? Next week, things may quiet in the tropics a bit. I think we get more wind shear. Even by next weekend, you've got more wind shear developing out of the Central and Eastern Atlantic. Uh, you do have a development zone that would still be favorable near the Yucatan, east of the Yucatan, south of Cuba. So you'd have to watch that, certainly. Um, but I don't think you're as favorable for the remainder of the tropical Atlantic basin anyway as we get into next week. Reminder, you can grab our app and watch that 14-day, see how things change along the way. And, of course, all of our videos as we issue them show up at the top as well. Noises, one degree outside, whether get it on the App Store or Google Play. And swag.onedegreeoutside.com if you want to get some of the merchandise. That's how things look for now. Always love bringing this pattern predictions. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you at onedegreeoutside.com.